Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming here. This has become a Monday night thing for me. It's kind of a good time I realized to do it the weekend. I've done all this stuff. I actually made a bunch of videos last weekend. And then Monday comes and I'm like, let's, I gotta make my video tonight because Tuesdays, Tuesdays are my vlog. Thank you for showing up here. Let me go ahead and give you kind of an outline of what this video is and you can check out anytime you want. First of all, I'm gonna do a little intro here. Talk about Hamvention for five seconds. Um, I'm going to talk about some videos I just made last weekend in Oklahoma, so you know what to expect from me. Um, I'm going to show you some so what happened to me there. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my first radio kit I ever built. I'm going to show it to you and talk a little bit about it. I have a ham radio book I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk a little bit about moving to Texas. I'm seriously thinking about that. We need to, we need to look at all the angles. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about... CB radios. I have one and I'm going to show you. I have like four CB radios and I'm trying to get rid of some of them. So I need your advice. And at very last, I'm going to show you a camping stove, a very crude camping stove. So that's going to be the gist of it. I do not plan these out very in advance a lot. I just kind of make an outline and just kind of wing it. Okay. So I'm going to wing it. It's so weird when I'm doing these these things. I feel so like, man, this is terrible. But then I watch them later. I'm like, I watch myself like, oh, I'm not, not that bad. Kind of interesting. All right. So let's get right into it. 38 days, 10 hours till ham, hamvention. I'm pretty much set up. I've got my hotel room and I know what I'm doing Friday night. But I do, we still, there's a five or six of us YouTubers. And one of them is, he's got 47,000 subscribers, Josh. I'm not going to try to pronounce this last name because I'm going to mess it up now that I'm thinking about it. But he's he's a big YouTuber, ham radio guy. And there's some other guys. I don't want to get their call signs right, but there's there's six of us. And we're trying to think of a venue or a place to go. We have no idea how many people want to go and show up. Please make a comment. Please write a comment. I'd, I'd like to go. I really want to go. Or yeah, I'll be doing something else Saturday night at Hamvention. It's okay. Just kind of give us an idea. Give me an idea if you want to go or not. We still don't know where it's going to be or how to do it. We have no idea. We don't know anybody in Dayton, really. If you know of a place in Dayton where we could all meet, where maybe 20, 30, or 40 people can meet without overwhelming a place, let us know. Let me know in the comments because we don't know Dayton that well. We need a place to meet. We'd like to just have a drink and have some talk, talk about meet meet the community, uh, have you meet us, that kind of thing. Just It's, it's just a I don't, I'm not part of a club. I don't know anybody there. I'm kind of a lone wolf uh, radio guy. Kind of just, I don't have time for a club, so I don't know anybody. It'd be kind of fun. Let's just have a drink. That's all. No big deal. Okay, so that's it for Hamvention. All right, last weekend I made, I went to Oklahoma to see my mom. My grandma's very sick. I brought my radio, though. I brought my KX2, 10 watts, and I struggled and struggled and struggled to make a contact. I made one contact on sideband. It was so hard. I called CQ, 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 10 watts. I'm very disappointed in 10 watts, by the way. Why am I wearing headphones? I don't need to listen to my audio anymore. Man. All right. So I'm, I called CQ, CQ, CQ. I made one contact. That video is coming out maybe pretty soon. And you'll see how much I struggled. And I kind of complained, but that's all right. That's kind of why I like the Yezu 891. I like to put out 100 watts because I make the contact. It makes for a boring video. If I'm not making contacts, it's kind of boring, right? This is the result. This is the result that I did get when I called CQ, CQ on, look at that, 33 decibels. Wow. So I called CQ a lot on on uh, CW, and these are this is the response I got. Uh, there was a lot of digital going on, so I didn't go to set, see on my 7055.5. 7055.0 was full of digital stuff, so I moved up a little bit and down a little bit. I experimented a lot. I called a lot of CQ, CQ, CQ. Nobody came back to me in, in CW. Nobody. I got one sideband in California, and that is in the video. So it was a very frustrating weekend, and so I went fishing. <laughs> anyway, so that's what happened last weekend. This, by the way, if you want to know how to find this. Okay, if you want to find out if you're calling CQ, CQ on CW, using CW, if you want to find out if you're being heard, go to Google, type in RBN, Reverse Beacon Network, Spot CQ. Click on this. Go over here and look at your call sign, N9YO. Then go down here and do Show Latest RBN Spots for N9YO, okay? That will show you where you're being heard by the Reverse Beacon Network. And this is how I, how my friend, Ron, gave me this, 
this information because I didn't bother to look it up, but he gave it to me. So you can go out and see if you're being heard by looking at the Reverse Beacon Network. That's for those of you that did not know that. Okay. Now I'm going to go and tell you a little bit about my very first ham radio project that I built with my own hands. Now, these are kits. There are kits you can buy where you can build your own radio, but they give you a lot of help online. They give you the manual, and they teach you exactly how to do it. So the very first kit I bought was... The Elecraft KX1 transceiver. This is, I don't think they make this anymore. I don't think you can even do this project anymore. But I did the project. I was only about four or five months into being a ham when I first did this project. I just, just learned how to solder. And I will tell you, you actually don't have to be that smart to do a project like this because you can follow the instructions. And I'll go on that in a second. But the instructions tell you in detail exactly what to do. And they have a they they give the pr printed circuit board, and they have numbering on letter like C1, and they tell you capacitor goes there, this type of capacitor goes there, but you have to be very very organized. So I had all these little bowls set out, I had all my resistors, my capacitors, all my everything. I had it all laid out perfectly, and I spent tons and tons and tons of time. And let me try and show you what I built. This, my friends, is not a KX2. This is a KX1. It is a, there's a red LCD right here. And it's very crude. You have to do multiple buttons. I made a video on how to work this. If you want to watch it, type in how to work the KX, how to, how the KX1 manual. But I built every bit of that. I soldered every single one of those bleeps, bleep, 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 bleep. I soldered all of that, and it took me uh, about a month because I was taking my time trying to be super careful. Now, I don't know if you can see in there, but deep within there, you can see those toroids. Toroids are those round things where you wind the wire around. I wound each one of those, and I, the whole radio is like kind of like this, and I'll show you more in the instructions. But I soldered every one of those. I followed the instructions. I did it to a T. You know what happened? I got to the end and the damn thing didn't work. I was so angry. I put so much time into it. I tried and I tried and I tried. I had this wire going across my living room. I had this little small house. I had crap everywhere. My soldering iron. I was like the mad scientist. Like, why isn't this working? I was so angry. I seriously, I swear to God. I almost chucked this down the street. I was so mad because I did all this work, all that work, and it didn't work. And you know what I did wrong? You know what I did wrong? A toroid looks like this, right? There's a wire. It's supposed to go through it like that. I went around it. I didn't know that, though. I took it to my, my Elmer guy. He's a real smart guy. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. He's like, oh, wait. Here, you need to push this wire through the toroid, not around it. I'm like, you're freaking kidding me, right? So he did it. It worked perfectly. I went from being super angry to ecstatic in five seconds. My, my only point is be patient. Be patient. You may have done everything right. Get some help. Sometimes all the things I do in IT are on a team. If we get stuck, somebody is there to help. If they get stuck, I'm there to help. Teamwork, man. You got to have teamwork. Otherwise, you're going to chuck your radio down the freaking street. I seriously wanted to throw it down the street. I was so mad I wanted to just chuck it because it made myself feel better, but I'm glad I didn't do that. So I have a KX-1, and they're, they're pretty rare now because I don't you can't buy them. Anyway, so what you do, we're looking at the instructions here, and if you were to put this together, this is the kind of thing you get when you put your radio together. If you're a new ham and you know a little bit how to solder, I highly recommend doing a soldering project. You will learn all about what are resistors, what are crystals, what are potentiometers, now, you're still not going to understand how a radio works because you're just following instructions. I'm not going to lie to you. I just followed instructions. All I did was put C1 where C1 goes. And so they give you lots of information here. You have to be kind of a nerd to do it. But there's the project. I'm going to show you kind of how easy it is to actually put one of these together if you're organized. See, they tell you right here, install capacitor C30. And they tell you what's that, picofarads next to C31. They tell you, and you, they give you a little box here, so when you print this off, you can check it off. 
So if you look at the printed circuit board, you will see exactly this spot. They have it numbered R14. It's right there. All you have to do is put the right resistor in the right spot. And resistors can go either way, but capacitors have to go a certain way. And they tell you in the instructions. Your kit includes an extra 22K resistor, red, orange, red, red, orange. Okay, you have to check all that stuff. You need to have your little, uh, your little electric tester. What is that damn thing called? You need to have that out. And you need to test everything. Make sure everything is right, and then you you solder it in. It's not that hard. R20, R5, all of them have different colors. You can test the resistance. You can test all that stuff. Putting these together is not that hard. It's really, really rewarding. One of the proudest things I ever did was build build one of these things. I'm sorry I'm dwelling on this, but it's a pretty pretty awesome thing to have a radio build a radio that works. All right, winding your your own toroids is as fun as it sounds. Um, you have to cut this wire. You, they give you a, a, a bunch of wire, and they give you this circle thing. The What is that called? The core, the ferrite core or something. And you have to wind wind the wire through it. And you have to count the number of inside. The, the number of turns is the number of the inside turns. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 turns. And then one, go, one of these wires goes out one side, and then you sand this off because it has a little thing on the end that's got a little paint on the end. You sand this off, and then you, you solder that to your board, and this is your toroid. That's what a toroid is. Um, I can't tell you what a toroid does, but I can tell you how I, can ma I made one before. <laughs> anyway, there are a lot of fun projects. I'm sorry I dwelt on that so long. Uh, this is going to go way more than 12 minutes. Make find a ham radio project, and I don't know if Elecraft even makes even even makes these anymore or any kind of craft anymore. All right, I'm running over, so I'm gonna quickly talk about. You know what? I'm gonna save that book for next week. Real quick, I'm gonna go on into CB radios. Now, I I just want to tell you. All right, so we are planning on moving to Texas, maybe. We're doing lots of research to make sure it's the right thing to do uh, based on jobs and in, in the IT industry, if I can make more money and it's warmer and we can we can get away from the kind of the – it's a big thing. So we're thinking about moving to Texas in a year from now, and I'm doing lots of selling on Craigslist. So I go out to Craigslist, and I sold – I literally sold three items in one day. It's the first time that's ever happened. It just happened that people wanted stuff. I've been selling lots of weightlifting equipment and all, but that brings me to a segue to these three vintage CB radios. I bought these three radios all at garage sales. Every time I see, B, see a CB radio, I buy it. These are probably like 5 to $10 each I bought. Okay, so I, I have these on Craigslist like right now, and I don't really know what to price them because I paid about $10 each, so I thought I'll just throw them out there for $50 and see what happens. If any of you can tell me about these radios, what they're worth, if anything, I kind of bought them as kind of a survival tool. Like maybe if I had these backup radios, maybe if something in the power grid went down, I'd have these radios. I could trade them or use them, you know, and talk locally. Um, Co I've got a Cobra. Some people have asked me questions. A lot of people have asked me questions about these. I don't know a whole lot about them. I know what CB radio does. You just plug it in and you get, you get citizens banned, right? Anyway, I've got these CB radios for sale, and I thought I'd show that to you. I don't know what they're worth. I don't like CB that much, but anyway, I bought this for $6 at Goodwill. Do you know what this is? This is weird. It looks like a very old um, two-way citizens emergency information radio. Check that out. Isn't that weird? It's a CB. It has an antenna. I'm sorry this is hard to show you. It has an antenna. I guess you put it on your car. It has a giant push-to-talk button. See that push-to-talk button? You plug it in your cigarette lighter, and you've got CB radio. you got your volume. You put it in your cigarette lighter. you got your volume. you got your regular CB. This is like a, this is like an old-school way of throwing throwing a... A survival radio in your car back when back when we didn't have cell phones. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool, and I'm gonna keep it. I'm not selling this. I might even try. I might even fire this dang thing up, man. See if it works. Anyway, I like all things radio. All 
Okay, guys, I need to finish this up because it was supposed to be 10 minutes. I swear, every time I think, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, and I go way over 10 minutes. We're going to do some camping stuff now. Let's do some camping stuff. I bought this a very long time ago, but it's freeze-dried, so it's probably good. What is this? What is this? Is that any good? What the heck is that? It's a breakfast skillet, freeze-dried pork sausage pepper skillet. I, I have no idea when I best buy. April 2047. It's as good until 2047. Freeze-dried is so awesome, isn't it? Seriously. 2047. I'm not even kidding. So I keep this in my basement. Why not? These, I wish these things weren't so expensive. I looked into buying my own freeze dryer. It's really not a not an easy thing. It's a big deal to do that. Dark chocolate cheesecake. I'm almost afraid to eat this because I'm afraid it's going to be awful. Dark chocolate cheesecake. All right, camping stuff. I've got one more camping item for you. I don't know if you've heard of these, these little stoves. Have you ever seen one of these? These are like Swiss Army or something, or Polish Army cooking stoves. Now the problem, oh my God, it smells terrible. <laughs> it smells awful. So these things are supposed to be like super portable. You open it up like that. These things are super cheap. You should be able to get these for less than five or $10. Espit. So what you do is you open it up like that and you can cook, you put your thing on it on the ground and you can cook on it. How cool is that? This is like a military, cheap military stove. Have you heard of these? Espit, E-S-B-I-T. Now what you do, is you buy these fuel cells. These things will burn for like four minutes or something. And you put one of these cells, you light it and you put one of these cells in here or underneath it or something. And then you put your thing on here and you cook your food. How cool is that? These are really cheap. You can get them anywhere. I, I'll pull, put a link in the description for everything I have, but I don't know why, but it smells really bad. The problem with these, though, is they have a lot of soot in them. I mean, they just have a lot of yuck. All right, guys, that's my camping show and tell. This is a show and tell show. My daughter has show and share. She's three years old and they have show and share. Well, guess what? I'm 45 and I do show and share, too. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm going to always let you know what's going on. Join me on Twitter at MyWillsRock, and I will have all my updates. Uh, I will be telling you everything that's going on at Hamvention, where I am and all that, if you're interested, and what I'm doing ham radio-wise. Thanks for joining me. All the links in, are in the description for all the products and stuff that I talk about. Thank you.